Diesel cars, well, they get a bad reputation in the United States. We sometimes even like to call them oil burners because, well, when they first started showing up here in the 60s, 70s, and even on into the 80s, they were emitting a lot of black smoke, a lot of harmful emissions into the environment. But that's not the modern diesel engine. With technology, they're actually now going to be the ones that give you the most miles per gallon, and they're also going to give you the cleanest emissions. But we're going to get back to that in a second. The other thing about the diesel engine that people sometimes tend to forget is that they're the most reliable ones out there usually. Diesel engines have less parts, they don't have spark plugs. Basically, when you get a diesel engine started, it's almost hard to stop them. If you remember, a lot of people say that, well, Mercedes cars, they run forever. Well, Mercedes built that reputation a lot on their diesel engines, which is a very good thing for us because the 3.0 liter six cylinder engine we have here, well, that actually comes from Mercedes-Benz. It's part of the leftover from the Daimler-Chrysler merger. So, the other thing about it is, why would we want a diesel engine in a Jeep? And it's actually very beneficial. Diesel engines are all about torque. Torque is where you get the power. That's why 18-wheelers, they're powered by diesel engines, so they can pull a big load. This car right here has 215 horsepower, but it's got 376 foot-pounds of torque. You can't get any more torque across the entire Cherokee line, except for one exception and that is the Hemi-powered SRT8. And that's out for more performance version. You're not gonna get that kind of gas mileage you're gonna get with this one because, well, the capacity is actually double of our 3.0 liter engine. So what do we got going for us? We got good MPGs. We've actually got about 20 miles per gallon here, about city highway we're doing, and that's very good for an SUV. We got great reliability, and we've also got that kind of torque that you want, the kind that you can pull stumps with or you can go off-roading. So the only real question we have left here is, has it come together together in the right package? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Now, one thing you really notice about the interior before anything else is its nice contrast. It's two different shades of gray, but it's pretty much as far as you can get in the different grays. We've got almost dark, almost black leather here. And we've got an off-white here, and so the whole interior just has a very premium feel to it. And that's good. I mean, you spend about $43,000 on a car and you want to get those little extras that make you feel good and make you feel premium. Another part of this whole package are the seats. It has the same exact color scheme, the light and the dark, has the insert here, and everything about it, well, it looks like a sports seat. And it just makes you feel all that much more premium. All the controls are laid out pretty well. It's that same touchscreen navigation system that we've had in the other Chrysler products. In fact, this is more of a command center because it's a navigation, it's a radio. It controls all sorts of other functions, including the Uconnect, the radio. And right here, that's just a very nice feature to have. It works well. We've got all the buttons that we want for the immediate stuff on the side. And then the touchscreen is big and it's just good and responsive. The dial's straightforward and that's all we can ask from them. And that's just, again, what you want out of the interior of this car. It's a truck, and we're gonna be talking more about the engine, but it quite frankly is, you pay a premium price and you wanna get a premium product. Diesel cars historically have had two real problems, and the first one was, well, as I said before, there are no spark plugs, but what we do have is a glow plug. And what that it does is it really starts up the car and you sometimes have to wait for that to warm up. Well, that means that you're not gonna be able to start the car just as soon as you would a gasoline engine. But obviously, they fixed that in this Jeep. And the other big problem is people always think diesel engines are a lot noisier. Well, we just started the car up and obviously there's not a whole lot of extra noise. In fact, it's actually very quiet in this interior. The only problem with that is I do miss that little clack 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 you get from there from the diesel engines because that just sort of tells you there's a lot of power just waiting to be harnessed. And if you truly miss that though, just give the engine a few little love taps and you'll really be able to tell there's a real low level grunt to this engine that says there's a lot more power here. Just, you know, come and play. And that's what you really want out of this car because, well, it's an off-road vehicle. We know this because it not only comes with full-time four-wheel drive, you can get full-time four-wheel drive on a lot of cars. But what you don't get on a lot of cars and a lot of trucks 
is a low range transfer. And what that's usually used for, that's used for the little off-roading things, the slow off-roading things where you have to go slowly over big rocks or big bumps or you just need those things for off-road. You've also got great departure and approach angles on this car, and that's because the Jeep is always thinking about what are you going to do when you're going to be off-road. We've got four-wheel ABS, we've got four-wheel disc brakes, we've got everything this car needs. We've got hill descent control, we've got hill start assist. All this stuff is all put together just so that this car can be taken in a lot of the rough stuff. And that's really what this diesel engine comes together with. It gives you that torque, it gives you that power. It means that, like I said before, we have 215 horsepower in this car. Well, that's not always that much for an SUV, but the torque, that power, well, it just means that that power is always there, it's always on tap. It means that you're really not gonna miss that extra horsepower. And that's great for the off-road because that means even when you're going slow, even when you're starting from just the middle of a rock, you're gonna be able to have a lot of stuff to give you that get up and go. And well, quite frankly, that's what a Jeep is all about. Hello everyone. Hi there. Uh, we are test driving the Jeep and we wanted to give a little bit of our opinion on uh, the interior, exterior and drive of the Jeep. So Miles, since you just took it for a drive, why don't you tell them a little bit more of a personal opinion about it? The reason why I kept talking about diesel engines and talking about what people used to think of them, I was one of those people. I didn't really see a lot of good stuff in diesels because I drive more cars than trucks. But the few times I've had to haul things, I've had to haul horses or actually a, a ton of sod in different places, you really needed a diesel engine. And this is what makes me a fan of this, is because this was just a very good all-around car. When I say there's power always on tap, I didn't really feel like I missed having a lot more horsepower. As long as I had enough torque, this thing drove around in the city like anything else. As far as the interior goes, you do feel very luxurious in here. I do like the faux wood and the whole combination of the light gray and the dark gray. And um, the seats actually are really nice. I do like the fact that they have the, the light gray inserts in the middle and then they have Jeep written across. So they've done really nice details on the interior. Makes you feel kind of tough, doesn't it? It does, it does, it does. It makes you feel kind of similar to what you're doing in a Land Rover, kind of, sort of. Oh uh, yeah, I would agree with you exactly on that. It's sort of that luxury tough, like you feel like almost like you could be that weekend warrior if you really wanted to, or mm -hmm. you could just put in the parking lot either way. Uh, another thing that kind of impressed me a lot was the sunroof. Um, the reason why it impressed me is because oftentimes when I touch the sunroof buttons, they're not very you know they're not very accurate, and you do have to play with it to get the certain way. This one I just kind of press vent or I press auto back and auto forward, and it does it automatically, which was really nice, and it did it correctly, and it just sounds sounds sturdy, and it sounds like it's it's something that's gonna not break on you in the last five minutes. Well, that's what you're supposed to get in a Jeep. The whole point is sunroof sometimes is your escape from a Jeep. If you accidentally get it between two rocks, that's why they have such a big sunroof. I, I don't really think they yeah. developed it that way, but you know what? If I had to get out of the sunroof in my Jeep, I would feel pretty good about my day, I think. Another thing that impressed me also, we, we, we got a, a loss a little bit and we had to use the navigation, which was... <laughs> Which was actually really easy to use and it gave you a lot of different options and a lot of different things so um, it's a very good GPS. I, I do like the, the way that it's set up and I do like the display and everything about it. Cool. It was really good. We were quite lost. We were looking for a destination. We won't say what because we'd be embarrassed if we had to say just exactly what we need to find. But the whole point was is that it was very good at finding it. It found very many for us so we, 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 we were able to get to where we needed to and as much as we live exactly what we're filming, we still get lost occasionally. Absolutely. I, that's, I think that GPS are very important and we should have them in more cars, which they are coming out with it more and more, so eventually it'll be standard equipment and not an optional equipment. So. Exactly. We'll never have to know where we're going ever again. We'll just let Jeep do it for us. Uh, well, it's like, kind of like the cell phones. We never know anybody's number anymore. We always have them stored inside the cell phone <laughs> directory. Uh, you called me the old man, right? I would honestly say this is what would get me into an everyday kind of diesel car. Is when I need a truck that I'm going to be, I need to have people, I need to do extra stuff with, and if I know I'm ever going to need to haul things, well, I know I've got that power, but it's also just a 3.0 liter six cylinder engine, which means I'm getting okay gas mileage. Yeah, this really is the kind of thing mileage. that would get me into a diesel. I do really like the interior, and I do really like the fact that uh, you do feel like you're you're in a, a diesel car. You don't feel a uh, diesel SUV, excuse me. You don't really feel like you're in an SUV, just any old type of SUV. It does feel a little bit more aggressive, and it does feel luxurious inside. So it's a really good combination of everything. So I like the 
outside and the guts of it. You like the inside and all and all the little good stuff. So between the two of us, we can buy a cheese. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so that's all we have for today. Uh, tune in next time for our next test drive.